Buenos días. Vamos a, a empezar hoy la sesión con el, el profesor, arquitect, con profesor arquitecto Javier Terrado Cepeda. Es profesor de proyectos de, de aquí, de la Escuela de Arquitectura de Sevilla. Eh, ha sido invitado por diversas universidades, en Londres, en Panamá, en Barcelona, Valencia y en otras y su labor eh, como investigador principal es el desarrollo, por ejemplo, de la vivienda desmontable tipo kit y ha participado como director en el proyecto Solar Kit de Solar de Carlón en los años 2010 y 2012, además de otras menciones como, como arquitecto. Le dejo ya, a, le paso la palabra y, ante todo, muchas gracias. Thank you very much, José. Mm. Uh, first of all, uh, I don't want to leave the chance to pay my personal tribute to Felix Skrig, whom everyone here in the school remembers and keeps uh, nice memories of him. He was my teacher in Structures 3 and Structural Practice in the last year of architecture. And I have to say that there in his courses, I found a professor with a broad architectural sensibility and knowledge. And from the, for the first time, long ago now, I realized that a deep understanding of a structural system could be a way to discover some of the true keys of architecture. So uh, I don't want to leave that chance to pay that tribute to Felix, who also was a good friend of mine. And now, after all we have done all these years since then, uh, I teach design here in the school, but also I, um, I've been responsible for some uh, research projects in the field of lightweight, lightweight architecture. After all these years, um, after all, all we have done these years, Relating this research on light construction, housing, above all, I find that this appeal on light, transformable, movable, and easy handle architecture has its beginning in those classes by Felix. The set of projects I'm going to show now are prototype projects um, in this presentation are the result of a long period of research about the implications of the lightweight and transformable construction in modern housing. Mm. All that began as a theoretical research on some of the concepts of the modern housing, and then it became a real construction research. Uh, there's a common place relating modern architectural icons like Bill Savoie, Franz von Haus, Le Corbusier, Mies, etc., that consider that these achievements are the consequence of formal developments, or at most of, let's say, new materials developments or bold structures developments, and so on. But during this period of research we've done all these years, we try to focus not in what we can see in modern housing, above all, in modern architecture, more on, on, you, on what you can see, on the formal uh, aspects of architecture, but on what modern movement have lead, leave us in terms of something that you cannot see, which, which are the aims or modern housing uh, in terms of uh, some invisible concepts. Let me extend as a previous part of this presentation in these components in what we consider the non-visual components, components of modern housing because this research on this kind of concepts was the basis of what we've done uh, in lightweight uh, prototypes and proposals uh, for uh, ephemeral or for movable or housing. 
So what I'm going to show now is some, um, uh, not much order, but uh, like a, a brainstorming of these non-visual uh, aims of modern housing uh, that we try to treat as a basis for our research after in creating a new step in, in, in let's say, prefat housing and um, modern housing. One of them was what we call the industrial appeal. As a result of the veneration of the triumphant industrial products like the automobile, the industrial appeal was one of the keys of the modern housing project. The other one was the search for the fast construction, also as a consequence of the industrial processes and that they were looking for. The other one was the efficiency in weight, something that is much related to what you've been seeing uh, in this uh, conference. The other one that we found in this kind of uh, uh, research uh, through the main concept of, of the modern housing project was the benefits of the small scale. One of the main issues in the agenda of modern architecture was to substitute size by convenience. And that meant to adopt a different attitude to the scale. In certain circumstances, a small domestic space could be good, comfortable, and well equipped domestic space instead of big domestic space. Other feature we found in this kind of journey through the uh, modern housing agenda was the search for easy handle materials, like for example, all kind of boards like plywood, um, all kinds of these materials that arise, uh, appeared in the scene of architectural housing and modern housing um, at the beginning of the 20th century. This years, so the developing of the new light materials, like, for example, plywood, and other kind of resistant and even out outdoor resistant panels that made possible to build light and easy. We found another feature in this journey, which was the, the search for fluid space. This is obviously not a modern project, but uh, it's does well as an illustration of that, and uh, the search of fluid space and thick habitable walls. New slender minimal structural system allowed reconsidering the role of the envelope. In ancient times, buildings needed thick envelopes. We can also deal now with thick envelopes, but in these times, as it happened in all medieval towers, they can be, they can house spaces because the envelope can have another kind of a structural light that can leave space to that kind of new uh, spaces in the, in the envelope. Other concept we found uh, essential in the housing, mo modern housing project was the new role of storage, the closets. Uh, Western modern house, the Western modern house is the place for both persons and belongings, not only for persons but also for objects. So wardrobes, cupboards, closets give architectural shape to the place of object and they can use them, we can use them to define the limits of the place for the person. So, What's going to be the role of the, of the storage in the house? Could be something that uh, could be related to the way we build the envelopes, the partitions, the structures. It's something that intrigued us uh, all those years. And finally, it ended up being a key factor of what we proposed and what we what I, I'm going to show you after. 
other concept was the theory of supports uh, that probably comes from, for the first time, from Le Corbusier and his image of the battle rack. This idea is to divide every housing building into types of components, the supports, the permanent, the infra infrastructure in a wide sense that depends on communal decisions, and the separable parts, lightweight, removable, that depend on individual decisions. The first ones are the territory of massive construction, and the second is the territory of transformable light construction. This is a image of the plan obus from Le Corbusier, where you can see the permanent, heavy, massive infrastructure and the light changing individual, movable, uh, separable part. Other concept that are, is in the base of what ended up being our project was the, uh, the research on the ingredients of domesticity. Uh, the sense of domesticity uh, is probably more in the furniture, in the small scale components, than in the general layout of the architecture that makes the house. The architectural critic Witold Rydzinski, we, who has written a lot about the history of, of the domestic space, has a nice theory. His theory is that the history of domestic space is the history of furniture rather than the history of architecture in capital letters. So furniture was another key factor uh, what we were trying to, to discover uh, in this period of our work. Other concept was the uh, thinking about um, diffuse structure, lightweight structure, same finally to be diffuse structure that's um, somehow merge with the envelope or somehow disappear in the whole uh, uh, shape of the, of the building. Other area of our research for uh, thinking about lightweight construction sections, uh, which could be something more uh, familiar for architects in other parts of the world, but here in the Mediterranean environment, in our area, it's a kind of a change of paradigm, thinking not in the mass as the way to defend from the environment, uh, instead of mass, thinking about layers, thinking about something that is light, but even though can deal with the with the climate, with the uh, with the defense from the from the uh, temperature conditions and so on, using light sections in, instead of mass. That that was a important part of our research uh, here in in Seville. Other one was to think about what happens to architecture, and particularly to housing, modern housing, when you are not in the, in the center of the uh, modern movement uh, countries, uh, let's say Central Europe, uh, but, in, but you are in the rest of the world. And we are used to see the international style, the modern forms of architecture, related to works that were done in Central Europe mainly. And in those areas, the relations with the habitat, with the climate, it's quite different to that of the, rest of, of the rest of the world. So something happens to architecture when it's ha it has to deal strongly with, with, the, with another kind of climate. They can be very modern. Uh, not having the visual aspect of the of the icons of the Central Europe modern movement uh, architecture and houses. So that was an interesting part of our 
uh, journey through through the through through the modern housing architecture. Now I I simply name them the concept and go on. Other one was uh, thinking about other ways to name the domestic space. Um, we have to ask ourselves you know, if all the types of spaces that we want for the house can be compressed in a few words, words like bedroom, bathroom, living room, kitchen and corridor and a few more. Maybe it's time to think about the house with other names uh, to somehow free the imagination, somehow let the creativity flow through other directions. Other concept was thinking about the experience of playing. The philosopher Jan Wichinga, it's a Dutch one, states that the, there's an inner appeal in every man for playing. There's an inner appeal in every one of us, in every society. To play houses is another uh, like um, archetypical uh, feeling that uh, we have to play with houses. Certain type of construction could allow introducing playing, the joy of playing, both in designing and building. Another area of a study uh, previous to the prototype is we did was thinking about the architecture of components as industrial products as in industrial products happens components that can be made of site and assembled with a set of instructions thinking about also informality why why domestic architecture must be formal, stable, packed in a simple shape? Why can it not be as informal as life inside houses? So we try to introduce this kind of informality in the, in the prototypes we thought well, we began doing. We thought about also another consequence of thinking of architecture of components, which was uh, trying to devise or trying to design um, systems of kits of parts uh, in some regions of the world, not in our area. It's not strange to find houses made from kits of parts, built in the same way we assemble a cupboard that we buy in in a department store. It's very usual that we can uh, assemble uh, by ourselves a big copper, a big closet from a, from a flat pack that we buy in a department store. So why couldn't we bring this kind of, of operations to the building of the house, something similar? working with a kit of parts. Uh, relating to other con concept, I uh, told you before, the other names for the spaces, is the thinking about new uses and new programs for the house. Why to think only or mainly in a nuclear family as the, for the canonical house? now that this type of living is a sort of minority, minority. New programs, new users, new ways to inhabit and try to find a flexible, transformable and new architecture that give space to that new uh, way of living in which the nuclear family is not the majority other concept. Think about something that um, the modern housing has left us is the device of working with islands in the houses instead of using partitions, walls, doors, 
working with uh, compact elements uh, with the service space inside that can work as uh, divisions of the space um, at, that can combine seclusion and visual continuity at the same time. This use of islands, service spaces, packed in boxes, inserted between main spaces. Something that relates to, I think, to all the concepts I'm talking about now is thinking about uh, haptic experiences instead of visual experiences. The house is experienced by all senses, not only by sight. And probably in, in certain moments, mainly with other senses than sight. So this is um, could be kind of a manifesto against photography as the main way to show or understanding architecture. Try to think about the house in terms of other senses rather than the not only the, the site. Research also and thinking also about bringing not high, high technologies to the house, but another kind of technologies, relaxed technologies, bricolage. A vindication of the user-friendly technologies that allow participation. That's a, this is a consequence of many of the other concepts. This is affordability, low cost. Participation has also something to do with affordability. Simplify, be practical to achieve low cost. Compact architecture. We that dwell in Mediterranean cities and environments know a lot about the benefits of living compact not only in terms of, of, of climate response, but also in, in, in the benefits of living more close one to another, and to do more efficient uh, housing and architecture, to minimize also the, the ecological uh, footprints of the of the buildings, that's important also. The voice of the user, and uh, don't be afraid of asking the user. As the architects, the Californian architect Richard Neutra used to do, asking the client about all aspects of his daily life. Uh, these are one page of one of the detailed answers he used to receive from his clients. As a result of as a result of working with um, Mediterranean environment, the research on climatic climatic devices, lightweight Mediterranean domestic architecture has to be full of devices to deal with such a, such a changing variable climate. Fragility. That's an important point because I think the, the degree of fragility we can handle is a cultural uh, heritage. Uh, how much fragile is a building depends on how we, how we the, 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 the concept of fragility that we have depends on our cultural background. What is very fragile here, here in Spain could be not very fragile in Japan, for example. So there's a path to, 
to think about that because uh, if if we if we think that fragility is something that depends on how the user consider treats maintain the construction if we think about that we could be m more free to bring lightweight uh, architecture to the field of Mediterranean housing. And so on, there, there were like a um, uh, variety of, of concepts, non, mainly non-visual concepts that we found in this journey, journey through the modern architectural housing project that gave us some kind of, of background to begin producing prototypes and projects, uh, advanced projects, innovative projects of new ways of doing modern housing based as a premise in uh, the techniques of prefabrication and lightweight structures and light materials and so on. So we tried at that time to come up with a proposal of a system that could be another step in the universe of prefabricated lightweight system and that somehow could have something of these conceptual components. Uh, and that's what we call one, the first of our proposals, who was called the furniture kit system. Furniture kit system. Uh, we thought of the house made of a series of pieces based in the scale, in the appeal of a furniture pieces. And the concept that gives rise to the system could be formulated as follows. If instead of considering the prefabricated home at the sum of walls and ceilings, or a, as a set of rooms of spaces more or less predominated, if instead of thinking that, thinking the house has walls, roofs, and so on, we think of the house, or we decompose the house in the different routines of the daily life, such eating, sleeping, watching TV, washing, storing, clothes, clothes, etc., and we associate each of them to a piece of furniture built with dimensions compatible with to be assembled. Then we can conceive the industrialized housing as a kind of a partnership of furniture rather than an architectural container. And so we can imagine the house as something comfortable, attractive, and even fun. So that was those, those, that was the main concept, to think of the house as it were a set of furniture assembled together. Each of the furniture built with compatible dimensions and housing a specific function of the house. So this was one of the first projects we did by that time, who was a project for a, a social semi-detached detached house made completely using this kind of uh, furniture pieces. As you can see, every piece has a similar aspect to that of a closet that you can buy in a department store and even you can assemble by yourself. Um, by putting them together, the house appears. So it's a system that could be easily industrialized, easily prefabricated, and also easily assembled by oneself. It could be, uh, at a certain point, very user-friendly. These are the one of the first steps of the research. We presented this project to a national competition of new solutions for 
housing in Spain, and we got one of the prizes. This is another way to to put the furniture together and producing another kind of, using the same number, the same kind of pieces of furniture. You see that here you find one layout, one two-story house, and then you move them and you can arrange it in, in a different way so you can uh, get another type of house using the same pieces, the same prefabricated pieces. This was one of the constructive sections. And you can see that there, in the cut, you see the orange shape is one of uh, the two pieces of furniture stacked one upon the other. The next step was to uh, move to another environment, not to the social housing, social single family housing, to another area who, where we thought it was demanded a uh, response to the, that kind of necessity. We moved to the problem of the immigrants in the fields of agricultural fields in, the, in Andalusia, where a lot of immigrants come searching for work, and even, if, even though many of them have contracts, uh, certain years they cannot find housing. So could be a nice way to apply this kind of system to take it to this reality, substituting these responses they have so far, like using these uh, lodging people in this kind of, of, of boxes. So we presented the system in another layout to another national competition for the lodging of immigrants, uh, temporary lodgings, and we design it, what we call the Campo Hermoso prototype. Campo Hermoso is a small uh, town in the southwest of Andalusia, in the area of Almeria, where a lot of people coming from northern Africa and East Europe come in certain seasons of the year to help with the recollection of, of uh, what they call the greenhouse, uh, greenhouse uh, agriculture. So we designed a prototype of a temporary lodging for 32 uh, immigrants using the same system, using the furniture kit system. There you can find that is bigger than the other one, one story, and we even made the fiction of uh, putting in, a, in paper what could be having a company that uh, supply material, furniture, to build this housing. You see the same pieces that you saw before, uh, forming another completely different shape or uh, building. There you can find, if you look closely, you can find there, besides the predictable pieces that one can imagine inside the house for a bed, and I don't know if I had that, for beds, for showers, for toilets, to sleep and wash and let's say the night part of the house. And besides also kitchen, washing machine, everything else here, and space for, for dining here. You can find another type of pieces like this one, which began to appear by that time, that we call the, the breeze, wind, uh, the collector. Um, this is uh, one of the passive climatic devices we designed by that time, 
and inspired by this kind of traditional wind towers of northern Africa. We produce another furniture that oriented to the dominant winds could bring uh, ventilation uh, to the whole uh, structure, to the whole lodging, putting them in certain points to produce cross ventilation in combination with the, another specific uh, piece, uh, furniture, which is the uh, a small patio, small courtyard, which is inserted in certain points, certain points of the house here. So you also can prefabricate these pieces with compatible dimensions, put them in certain points of the house, and produce this kind of bioclimatic effect. Very important, very useful in that location. Almeria is a very hot uh, region in summer. This is the, a big model we with, with did to show the project. We got the first prize here. But by that time, we still we weren't able to build it. Uh, we tried to talk with the administration, with the promoters of the competition, to find financial support to build a prototype. And it was impossible by that time. But at the end, using these precedents, we, com we presented the project to um, the regional government uh, gave a fellowship to research projects, and we got uh, one of the one of those fellowship uh, projects, and we were able. Uh, we, we, it was uh, by, we we're talking about uh, the year 25. So we presented the project to uh, the first call for proposals for research project in architecture and housing. So we got the first prize there, and we got 60,000 euros to build one prototype. And we selected one piece of this project, we came here, we got, like, if you see here, we have 32 uh, people living here, and if you take uh, a space for eight people, you, you have this L-shaped wing. So we designed a small version of the other project, and we designed this. It was a lodging for temporary workers, eight temporary workers in the agricultural field. N not in the western Andalusia now, but in the eastern one. Uh, again, not in the eastern one, it was Armeria, but in the western one was Huelva for immigrants in the fields of strawberries. No es fresa, strawberry no es fresa, es, I don't know what the word is actually for fresa. Okay. And then we were commissioned to produce detailed plans of the prototype, to make it feasible, to make it possible. So these are selections of the plans we did for that occasion. There you can see the set of furniture, the you have to prefabricate to produce the whole house here. There you can see the courtyard, the patio. You can see the wind tower, another patio here, another courtyard, another wind tower here. The bioclimatic effect that you produce with the wind tower, with the ventilated lightweight roof here. Interior space, detail, construction detailed section. Again, the plan, some plans of the uh, construction project. And finally, for the first time, after several years, we were able to build the prototype, to prefabricate it 
in off-site in a factory and bring it to Huelva and build it in one week. This is the uh, photomontage of the what we wanted to produce here in a, the town council of a, uh, a town near Huelva, Cartaya, gave us a space to to put it near the architectural, uh, the agricultural uh, fields. This is the place they gave us to build it. And this is the final result of the first prototype. Should be an interior. It's easier to see the composition of pieces of furniture in the interior views rather than the exterior one. They should be the furniture put one by the other. This is a space for dining and day space, a night space here with the space for for the workers that come to Andalusia with no family, mainly men when they are single or they leave their families in their home countries. So they share these spaces, kind of a residence. Then the next step was, is an um, unbuilt one. Uh, unfortunately, the economic crisis has its consequences here because we were very close to do a big version of that, like a small city, a dismountable city in Cartaya, in that place, because the, the mayor of the town commissioned us to uh, produce a, like a, a lodging for uh, 200 people there and we began with the project bringing it bringing them to the scale of a small city this multiple city it was not possible but it remains as, as a nice project of of uh, building a ephemeral city And now I, I, I show you the next step of that uh, research, which was another built prototype, now in the form of a family house. And for an event, special event, which was the International Competition Solar Decathlon, which, uh, some of you know, is an international uh, uh, event that brings to a certain place prototypes from all over the world uh, of housing with uh, uh, solar energy, prefabricated housing using solar energy. That is a, a competition because uh, at the end one of the, one or some of the teams, which are mainly university teams, get some awards uh, concerning several concepts. And we took the opportunity to send the project to compete there. Uh, a lot of university teams all over, all over the world send the projects, and then a jury selects, um, it depends on the year, a million of, of 20 proposals to be built. They give some money, and the teams also get some sponsors to, to, to build the prototype. So we, so we use the same concept, the same kind of system, to build during Solar Decathlon another prototype, but now for a family, for a, 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 could be a regular family, a nuclear family, with one couple and two kids, or two or three kids. So we use the same system, now in a more compact way, using uh, the towers, using the patios, using the, all this kind of furniture. Um, uh, 
designing space for kitchen, for dining, for living, for studying, a small studio here, a uh, space for, for a deconstructed uh, uh, bathroom here with all, all you need for in the bathroom part, put it in a, not in a room, but, scat but scattered in the, in the house, and there are two small bedrooms here. So I, I pass the images quickly because the project is quite similar to what you've seen before. So it, this is the, the history of the competition of Solid Decathlon, which is uh, mainly uh, takes place in Washington, but we competed in a, a year where Spain had the opportunity to organize the competition in Madrid. So we built the built the prototype in Madrid in uh, three years ago. This is the project, some plans of the project, detailed project. I pass it quickly. And this is the process of building in a transporting and building the prototype here. This is photographs of the interior space, the model again. The, uh, I, I, I won't extend it that, but now here the wind towers are more sophisticated and it's a combination of devices, bioclimatic devices using the uh, convection effect for the, for using the it's, it's, it's long to explain it. You, you have the uh, oriented to south, you have the sound, the sound here that produces some convection effect for ventilation of the house. And at the back side of the tower, you have a um, ceramic uh, envelope that uses an evotranspiration effect. By humidifying it, you produce a cooling effect here in the gap and this cooled air can be brought to the inside of the, of the building, uh, giving an effect of uh, refrigeration with no energy consumption here. Some detail of the project that was built, you see, in the center of Madrid near the Palacio Real and Catedral de la Almudena. And again, it was a, a, a almost Moorish concept. It was a, we tried to be very uh, radical in this concept of having a house completely inward, uh, oriented to the courtyard in, instead of being a house to the landscape. Could be a Mediterranean courtyard house, bringing the light and the ventilation and the, with small courtyards that worked as, also as climatics, climatic regulators. Um, that was the last uh, prototype that we built um, using the system, the furniture kit system. We tried to do another one. We was on the verge of doing another one, but finally we, the promoter uh, couldn't afford it. It was built uh, the minimum housing unit the what we call the R kit 18. 18 are the square meters that this unit has. It's for a couple in a unit that with 18 square meters using the furniture system, but has everything that a house can provide to a couple living inside. A space for sitting and dining and storage and washing and ironing the the bed, movable bed, bathroom, kitchen, and even a small courtyard here. We did the whole project, and it was going to be 
showed in a in a construction fair here in Seville, but the organizer of the stand finally couldn't afford to build the prototype, so it was only a project for a small unit, the minimum house that you can do with the system. And that, so far, is the last project we've done with the this system in which we stress or we we have to say that we find three main uh, features that could be interesting for this conference. One is the um, use of the this special scale of prefabrication, not the big scale of a container scale, not the scale of prefabricate walls of roofs, but prefabricating these pieces that could be easy transported, easy handled at the scale of a furniture. So the special scale of prefabrication. Other interesting feature that I want to remark here is that the possibility of design by choice. You can use the concept of playing. You have the pieces, you can, you can move it, you can produce your whole, your your own design, your own house by working with these pieces as if you were working with a with a housing toy, a housing play. Um, another interesting feature is the possibility of easy dismountability. You it you can you only need to using a screw to dismount it and you can take the pieces of furniture to another location easily. So is these three, I think these are the main features of the, of the system that are somehow related to this conference, which is the, this special scale of prefabrication, lightweight prefabrication. The second one is design by choice, and the third one is the, the possibility of, of moving there easily, like in the same way that you move a piece of furniture in your, in your house. And that's it so far. I don't want to finish. Let me abuse of your confidence and, and um, let me just one minute more to show you something that is not related to this project, but it's uh, uh, what we produce as the next step of our research in prefabricated housing, which is based in another completely different concept, uh, but it produced a nice prototype and it was, it got some of the main awards of the next uh, edition of Solar Decathlon in last year. And it was the prototype called Patio 2.12, Patio 2.12, uh, that we built in Madrid. And I will show you some images to finish my presentation here of Patio 2.12. This is another kind of project, a prefabricated project, lightweight project, basing another type of scale of prefabrication. You prefabricate the whole uh, room, which is somehow bigger than a regular room. It's not a, you see, four pieces, and each one of them uh, contains uh, not only a bedroom, but a bedroom but a, and a bathroom, um, not only a living room, but a living room and a kitchen, and this kind of bigger than a room pieces produced by its, its association around a patio, a uh, complete house. i only show you some images without commenting them. That's the <coughs> so the combination of a four uh, pre completely prefabricated models around a flexible space, also partly prefabricated, which is the courtyard the inner patio. There's the project, and I'll show you the final result. Ah, let me pass. This shouldn't be here. Yeah. Let me, here. This is the project we did for Solar Decathlon, the prototype we built then. The inner patio, prefabricated modules around the patio, prefabricated uh, roof, which is made of two layers, one of glass, movable glass, another one, a pergola, and that 
somehow simulate this uh, vine, a vine. Interior, exterior. You see how it's like put in the ground with no uh, foundation. This is a general view of the event of the competition, solar decathlon. As you see, there are a lot of solar panels because the the house produced three times the energy it needed for the for for the function. This is the audience visiting the house, the politics. And that was the prices we are very proud to we achieved that by that time in the competition. And that's it. Thank, thank you very much. That's it.